Tenant finds camera, uses it against landlord. What should have been an exciting start to a new chapter of her life, was now filled with sleepless nights, constant nausea, and unending stress. The problem was she wasn't able to just pick up and leave. She also couldn't let this awful man get away with what he had done to her. Nancy Dorison of Wolcott, Connecticut, had dreams of a cute house on a tree-filled property and a vast garden. But since she was just starting a new life on her own, a small apartment would have to do. This is how she ended up meeting Mr. Hollard. As a landlord, he seemed fine at first. Their brief interactions were pleasant and the rent was affordable. He was even willing to move the rent date to the 8th when she got paid. She was nearly unpacked and already dreaming of a small herb collection in her kitchen window when the knocking started. Things went downhill quickly. Mr. Hollard poked his big belly through the door as she opened it. The first greeting might have been to make sure she was settling in okay, but when he tried to walk in, a deep, uneasy feeling settled in the pit of her stomach. She stood tall, and with a calm voice, reminded him he couldn't come in without notice. The skin folds around his eyes creased with anger. Next was a long rant about how had dealt with horrible tenants in the past and wasn't going to make that mistake again. He might have conceded one conversation, but she quickly learned he wasn't going to back off. One afternoon, she heard the front door squeak open. Nancy couldn't believe it. The guy actually had the nerve to try and come in with his own keys without any permission. She fumed as he spouted off excuses of neighbors smelling smoke. She reminded him of how bad it looks for a grown man to break into the house of a young, single woman. It was clear she needed a plan. Sadly, there was no option of just giving 30 days notice and leaving. Being a new renter, she wasn't able to find a new place as quickly as she needed. So, she started to write down and film every interaction. Every knock at the door came with a new, crazy excuse that left her stressed and feeling very unsafe. One morning, while cleaning and blasting jazz through her earphones, she spotted something strange. It was a small hole in the wall, nothing out of the ordinary from afar. But when she looked closer, she felt the bile rise into her throat. The sicko had put in a hidden camera. He had been watching her the whole time. Nancy sat on the sofa, wrapped in a thick blanket, feeling utterly violated. Every part of her screamed to dial 911, but a small voice pointed out something very troubling. It could end up a matter of, his word against hers. He could also remove any trace of the equipment before she could act. She knew who to call. Her friend wasn't a computer was by any means. But he was capable enough he could help her gather some evidence. Under the front of, helping her clean, and then, watching movies, he was able to get what she needed, the IP address source. Now she could call the cops. It was the sickening circus she had predicted. Uniforms showed up and Hollard denied everything. He went as far as to say that she was the one causing all the problems. Her anger reached its pinnacle when he pulled out the contract and pointed to one line of small text that said he could come in without notice. Despite her strong front, inside she was falling apart. The sleazy man was doing everything he could to make her look bad. She was the innocent one in all of this. Nancy flipped through her contract and noticed something, it was her second smoking gun. It was time to take him to court. The weeks leading up to the court date might have been quiet but every day she felt like she was going to be sick. She had searched the rest of the apartment and found three more cameras. So, with piles of evidence in hand, she finally stood before a judge. She pulled out her laptop and hit play. As the evidence unfolded, including the fact that her contract was different from his, she watched with extreme satisfaction as Mr. Hollard turned ghost white. Each new tidbit built another layer of brick in his coming jail. In the end, even the judge commented on the depravity of the situation. As for the settlement, it was far more than she had expected. She now had enough for a small down payment on a tiny home and the gratification of seeing him taken away for jail time. She would get her garden and a little piece of quiet heaven sooner than planned. She had to go through misery to get it, but she also ended up wiser for it.